I think that um, our technicians, um, their customer service is like top notch, right? Um, so they're really caring about the dogs in the houses. Um, if the clients give us permission, we bring treats for the dogs. Um, we care about the, the kids in the house. Um, just like those little details of, you know, like organizing, you know, the five-year-olds, like, you know, teddy bears um, and making it look like they're having a picnic oh, or something. Um, yeah, they leave like little love notes for the clients that say, hey, you know, I did this little extra something today. Um, just so that the client feels like extremely important. Um, I think that also since we're kind of like entering into like the R word ish, but we're not really mm -hmm. talking about it. I think it's important for the clients to feel super special. Welcome to Why Am I Talking? A podcast where the guests are so good, you'll wonder why the host is even talking. In each episode, you will hear one of the leaders of the Lehigh Valley's vibrant business hub. They will tell you the keys to their success, the mistakes they've made, and what they have in store for the future. Here is the host of Why Am I Talking? From Why Am I Insurance, Jimmy Honachik. All right, that is me. I am Jimmy Honachik, and I am thrilled to be on this episode. This is going to be fantastic. Um, today, I have Rose Salvaggio from Hocus Pocus Cleaning. Uh, the business, I think, is blowing up. I don't know how you feel, Rose, but I, I see you all over the place. Um, I see the business all over the place. You're on TikTok. You're in the executive forum. So I, was, I saw it. I was like, I got to get you on here. So thank you for finding the time to get me in. I'm really excited for this episode. Oh, thanks for having us. I'm so excited, too. Absolutely. So, Rose, I mean, Hocus Pocus is the business. Um, tell us what it is, how it got started, what, wh why you're doing it. Well, that's a mouthful. Um, so I uh, dropped out of college at 17 because I didn't know what I wanted to do um, and did things. Can I interrupt though? You were in college at 17? Um, yeah, I graduated when I was 17 from high school. Oh, good for you. Okay. But I had no idea what I wanted to do essentially. Um, yeah. So I stopped going. Um, and did things like super out of order. So I had a baby when I was 21 um, and then decided I wanted to go back to college to, you know, maybe help with like mental health stuff with people. Yeah. Um, so I started going back to school and I was working in a restaurant and I had like no time for family at that point. So um, I had done a lot of work for like contractors, um, like painters, con uh, carpenters, um, new construction, post-construction, um, starting in 2013. Um, so 2016, um, I thought that was enough experience to, you know, file an LLC and call myself a cleaning service. Yeah. And that wasn't the case. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people were really, really upset um, with the way that we were cleaning <laughs> their houses. Um, so yeah, I had no business plan. Um, yeah, I just used local moms groups, Facebook groups. Um, I think everyone kind of really likes the name. Um, yeah. So that kind of got us in the door in a lot of places. Um, but with every time that I'd get a complaint because I didn't know how to do it sufficiently, um, I got tougher skin and then used the experience to learn. And uh, yeah, um, I planned on closing it when I was finished with grad school in 2020. Um, but like most of us have experienced, 2020 was a really funny year. Yes. Um, so yeah, I had uh, 15 houses pre-COVID. And then um, by the end of that summer in 2020, we were at 60. Wow. So at that point, I had already sat for my state boards. Um, I'm a licensed social worker. Um, I got into private practice. So I do have an office up in Shecksville. Hmm. Um, but yeah, that's the part-time thing now. This is the full-time thing. Um, yeah. So, so, I mean, you, you, uh, that already sounds like too much. Like I'm, I'm stressed out thinking about running both those things, hearing you, but uh, I mean, how did you, uh, you wanted to make money when you were, I guess, going through grad school. Um, and then it just, it blossomed from there. I mean, talk to me about, I guess, 2020 when you went from that 15 and it really ramped up, what was that like? Terrifying. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I was at this crossroads because I really felt like my passion was in mental health and, you know, helping others in that regard. Um, I think yeah. mental health has been really stigmatized, at least in my experience growing up and everything. So um, I thought that's what the calling was. Um, but we had a, a cleaning client that actually uh, got on the phone with me and he said, you know, it would be really stupid of you to walk away from this. Like, I think that you have something really good going on here. 
Um, and he actually ended up passing away from COVID a little bit later. So, um, you know, I hold him right here. Um, and what he says, I think about it often because it's like, I, I was stuck. I'm like, do I keep doing this? Um, I, we knew how to clean at that point. So that was a plus. Um, (laughs) but, um, yeah, no, we, uh, we really had to pivot very quickly. Um, I had no idea about systems or processes or operations or, you know, anything like that. And, uh, yeah, it was just trial and error, trial and error. Yeah. At one point I was, you know, the marketing people, the cleaner, the office person, uh, advertising. Like I was oh wearing God. all these hats. Um, Were you still in school while wearing those hats? No. Thank you. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, school ended in May. Um, we weren't allowed to open back up from, you know, restrictions and stuff with COVID mm-hmm. until June. Um, and, uh, yeah, June to August is when things got really crazy. Yeah. And how were you able to attract talent to be able to do that? Right. Like you, you can't be the one cleaning all those houses. I would imagine at that point. No. So you said Facebook was a big strategy. Facebook was a big strategy with, you know, getting clients in the door. Um, Mm. at one point Facebook also offered like a job section. So, um, at first I hired friends Mm -hmm. Um, but over the past, you know, seven years of being in business, I'm kind of realizing that, you know, you don't hire friends and work with friends because I don't have any of these people anymore. Um, Mm -hmm. because there's boss me and then there's friend me and the lines get blurred and it's not fun. So, um, our longest standing employee actually applied through Facebook jobs. Um, she had been here two years in July or August, I believe. So, um, I had no training systems in place. Like when I would train people, I would hand them a rag and I'd say, Hey, go clean that bathroom and I'll just come check on you then. Um, hope for the best. And right. Yeah. So what makes hocus pocus, you know, the best, like why should someone pick hocus pocus cleaning? Uh, I know there's the rose touch has expanded to, to your, your employees. So what makes it special? I think that, um, our technicians, um, their customer service is like top notch. Right. Um, so they're really caring about the dogs in the houses. Um, if the clients give us permission, we bring treats for the dogs. Um, we care about the, the kids in the house. Um, just like those little details of, you know, like organizing, you know, the five-year-olds, like, you know, teddy bears, um, and making it look like they're having a picnic or something. Oh, that's um, cute. Yeah. They leave like little love notes for the clients that say, Hey, you know, I did this little extra something today. Um, just so that the client feels like extremely important. Um, I think that also, since we're kind of like entering into like the R word ish, but we're not really talking about it. I think Mm -hmm. it's important for the clients to feel super special. Um, but my big focus has been employee retention. Um, I've been really, really focused on taking care of the team and, um, you know, giving them the opportunity to grow with us. So that, what does that look like? So uh, we go through that all the time here where, um, I, to me, talent's like the most important thing. Like I'm, I'm cool. I do stuff, but they're the ones talking to the clients. They're the ones putting the teddy bears in the tea party, you know? So what do you do to really focus that and drive that for you, the business? Um, I mean, we have like monthly team meetings because everyone operates primarily solo. So everyone mm-hmm. gets together and uh, a lot of the times we'll open up the meeting with like, hey, you know, how do you make your clients feel special? How do you make your clients feel special? Um, if we have a really great employee and, you know, they refer somebody that they think would be a great fit here, they get a bonus. And then if that person knows somebody, they get a really good bonus. And you know, we just build the team from that point. Um, outside of that, our interview process and our hiring processes have been like super tightened up this year. Um, just because we do want to be like the Harvard of cleaning businesses in this area and beyond eventually. Um, But, you know, we can't just hire anybody off the street and hope for the best. Like we really have to go through, we have a pre-interview process, an actual interview, um, a working interview. So, um, a lot of the times, from what we're seeing, if we hire somebody on like Indeed, like by day three, we could usually figure out if they're going to, you know, come in and be beneficial for the team and the company and the clients. So. Yeah. It's, it's funny. So you're talking about scaling the operation and kind of attracting that talent. And I, I, like I said at, at the start, the branding that you've done, like you being out there, I feel like must work wonders. I, I've got to imagine at this point, people are trying to find you and work with you. Is that something that you've noticed? 
Um, no, actually, but <laughs> I'm also like a critic to myself, right? So, mm-hmm. um, but no, I mean, I've noticed like trend wise, like this has been like the slowest holiday season we've probably had mm. ever, but I've also overly prepared this holiday season. So that could be part of it too. Yeah. Um, but I think that there's a lot of people in the area that, um, you know, everyone's trying to make extra money for the holidays or, you know, groceries cost more than they did last year. Um, so every time you turn around, there's a new cleaning service popping up. Um, and they're, you know, undercharging by a whole lot, but a few things that they're lacking would be like insurance, workers comp, um, you know, all of that kind of stuff. So, um, talking my language now it's, yeah, it's a very saturated industry in this area in particular. Um, I'm noticing. Yeah. But you, I mean, all right. So what I'm hearing is like you, you get driven, right? Like you are someone who, I don't know if it's a challenge that gets you excited, but you, you don't take the easy way. And you, you were relaying a story to me about the birth of your most recent child. Yep. Um, can you, <laughs> and I think it ties in perfectly, right? Like you are, you're a headstrong person. So I don't know if you want to share that here, but I thought it was, it was like indicative of who you are. I mean, I think that's like a really good reference point. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. So my youngest is six years old. Her name's Aurora and, uh, she's a firecracker and anybody that knows her knows that. Um, mm-hmm. but, um, yeah, when I was expecting her back in 2017, um, it was on nine 11, um, and my water broke and she was due a few days later, but we didn't want to have her on nine 11, um, right. because it's nine 11. <laughs> So my water breaks at home. I had just gotten back from, um, I was a junior at Cedar Crest at that point. Um, and, uh, I'm like, you know, I'm going to shower, I'm going to fold laundry. I'm going to order a pizza, you know, like all this fun stuff. I'm just hanging yeah. out at home. Um, it's just water. It, I mean, what else, you know, <laughs> we'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then at one point I'm like, maybe I should call the doctor. Like this might be a thing. Um, so yeah, we, uh, missed every single red light flying to the hospital that night. <laughs> We get to Cedar Crest Hospital. Um, I had to get put in a wheelchair from the valet stand because, oh like, I yeah. couldn't walk. <laughs> um, <laughs> we get up to you know, mom and baby unit. They they get me in there, and uh, I'm like, I, I think it's time. And they're like, no, it's fine. I'm like, no, it's time. So we, we had her in the hallway, um, and that could have been easily avoided if I wasn't so headstrong. I should have called <laughs> the doctor when my water broke. So. Mm-hmm. But now you've passed that on to your daughter, it sounds like. She's also very headstrong. Uh, yeah, both of my daughters are. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. Like, I, I, how do you find balancing family with work? Like, I, I try, you know, it's, it's hard to find that balance where you, you want to give it all to your business, right? And you want to give it all to your family. And finding the time for both, I, I find personally challenging. Um, I love the challenge. But how, how do you make it work? Uh, I mean, well... Being, you know, uh, having my background in mental health and stuff, like they give you like full courses on like self care and boundaries and, you know, separating work from, you know, your home life and, Mm -hmm. you know, what methods can you use to make sure that you're not taking work home with you. So I try to keep a lot of that at the forefront of it. But this whole year, like the main um, word I can think of is like delegating. Um, I was noticing that like I was, you know, falling short. I felt like I was falling short as a mom. Um, mm-hmm. I do I appreciate that, you know, the fact that you own a business, you know, you're not missing, you know, softball games or dance recitals right. or practice or whatever. Um, so I can appreciate that, but on the same time, like on the same, on the same t- opposite side of the coin, I guess you'd say, um, mm-hmm. how present are you if you're answering emails from your phone while you're doing those things? Right. Yeah. hundred percent. Uh, so yeah, I think delegating, I have a really great management team that works with me. Um, they all rock. Um, but like, thankfully for the delegating aspect of it, like I was able to take off the whole month of September this year for our wedding and our honeymoon and, um, actually unplug for once. Cause I usually, yeah. And, and yeah, um, it's, it's difficult, but I think that once you prioritize it and you kind of find that like, you know, ebb and flow with it, um, mm-hmm. Your family's happy. You're happier. It seems like work goes a little bit smoother that way too. Yeah, I uh, I need to pick your brain because my seven year old, my nine year old, my four year old don't want to talk insurance with me. I bring it home, but they don't care at all. So I need to figure out <laughs> why how wouldn't to they get want that. to talk about insurance? <laughs> <laughs> but you brought up your your wedding and your honeymoon, and I get the sense that you love to travel. Um, yeah, talk to me about traveling because it seems like. 
all right, there, there's your job, there's your family, and then traveling might be number three on there. Talk to me about the love, where it comes from, and where you where you want to go. Uh, well, that's a loaded question. Um, All so, my questions are loaded. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, well, my husband travels a lot for work. Um, okay. So if I wasn't able to, you know, go with on certain, you know, excursions, I wouldn't mm-hmm. see him. Um, right. But that kind of ties into another story I told you about. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it kind of started when I was in grad school um, and I was taking my first trip to Europe. Um, we were going to Scotland and London uh, with Marywood University. And um, we landed in Scotland. My grandmother actually came from there um, in the 30s or oh, wow. 40s. Um, and she passed away in 2012. So um, like I got off the plane and I heard like the the Scottish accents and got like super emotional. Um, but, uh, COVID was like shutting down borders, like while we were over there. Um, wow. so yeah. So what are we, February, March, March. March. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, and our professor on the way to the airport was like, so what's everyone hoping to gain out of this trip? Like, what are you thinking? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, COVID who, what's that? Like <laughs> stupid. I'm like, right ignorant so ignorant um but yeah then you know people are texting me and they're like you're probably not going to be able to get back into america like when you guys do try to come home like this is getting really bad and yeah yeah uh we canceled the trip in february so did you? hearing yeah hearing that you were there in march but i mean tell me more about the experience while you were over there uh it was awesome i mean everything over there is different the people are different um the mannerisms the food um the architecture, uh, the culture, everything's just so different than here. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and from like my understanding, like everywhere in Europe has like its own, like, you know, flavor, like vibe that's completely different than like, you know, the country next to it. So, um, yeah, my going to Scotland was, you know, always on my bucket list because of my grandmother. Um, but then, you know, London got cut off the trip because, COVID. Right. Um, so it was a goal to get back over there to see London. Um, but the first international trip me and my now husband took was to Greece, um, in twenty. Which is like on my bucket list. How, how was it? Like, don't make me too jealous, but tell me how it was. Um, it's amazing there. Um, the yeah. people are so freaking nice. Um, everything there is like, I never, cried seeing something in nature that was like, you know, naturally there. Like, yeah. and I was like sobbing. <laughs> what, anything in particular? Uh, the caldera and Santorini for sure. Okay. Wow. Yeah. It's beautiful. Um, and we liked it there so much that we got married there back in September. <laughs> so, um, we went back to Santorini for, you know, uh, nostalgic purposes. Yeah. I didn't hysterically sob this time seeing the caldera, <laughs> but it's still that beautiful. So <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. And another place you told me that you traveled, um, but maybe your kids didn't know it, Disney World. Tell me how you pulled that (laughs) off. Uh, Well, like I said, my kid's a firecracker, right? Um, Right. So he's like bouncing off the walls and we're like, hey, like, you know, she loves mac and cheese. We're like, hey, we're going to go to Wisconsin. Um, And (laughs) he's like, what's in Wisconsin? And I'm like, it's the mac and cheese capital of the United States. Right. And he's like, that's so exciting. And I'm like, Yeah. (laughs) Um, but meanwhile, every time that she saw like the beginning of like, you know, Frozen or Moana or whatever, she's like, we want to go to Disney. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I'm like, maybe one day. Um, and I never really understood like the chaos that's associated with Disney. I had never right. been there as a kid or anything. So I had no idea what I was walking into. Um, but yeah, she, um, she got there and she started seeing like the Mickey Mouse soaps in our hotel room and stuff. And she's like, yeah. everything seems like a Disney and I'm like, yeah, it's a Disney, it's a Disney themed hotel. Yep. Um, <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah. We, we had her completely figured out. Like she, she had no idea. Um, she didn't That's figure awesome. it out until she saw the ball at Epcot. She was like, I think we're at Disney world. We're like, yeah. <laughs> How cool was that? Like just watching her face must've been so exciting. I cried again. So, you know, I just, <laughs> I just realized that I cry all the time now. So <laughs> no, it was awesome. That's really cool. I mean, we, yeah, Disney is a a whole other world unto itself. Um, We went, I don't know, two years ago. And I like, I'm not super type A, but for Disney, I feel like you have to be. And I was like, we're hitting all these places, got the double stroller, pushing the kids through, but it's so much fun. Like it's, it's, it is magical. It is. 
Um, yeah. My husband went through his internship there, though, in college. So he, no like, way. Doesn't, he doesn't seem to think so. He's like, if you ever want to go back, like, I'll stay at the hotel and, like, just sit by the <laughs> pool. <laughs> um, so the internship scarred him. I think so. Um, I think it's just the mouse that scarred him. But <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. Um, so so y- your dream is, is Europe. You're in love with Europe. Um, I do like but, Europe, yes. I love it. But now... Now we're we're here with the business. I mean, what's next for Hocus Pocus? Like, where where do you see it going? I I thought I heard something about expansion, but I'm curious. Like, you've got it to a successful point. So what's what's next? Um. Well, I mean, we do have our you know um, witching hour packages that we kind of expanded on um, in the past few years. So I love I love the name, the witching hours. Like you guys, the branding is on point. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, we, uh, we do the witching hours, so it's not just cleaning. We can go in and like organize closets or pantries or, you know, that kind of stuff, help people with attics, you know, boxes, all, all of that. Um, but yeah, now that like the systems and processes are kind of like in place here, I wouldn't be opposed to, you know, expanding down like closer to Philly or, Hmm. um, up closer to New York. Um, but you know, in terms of, um, like a whole different city somewhere else that kind of just seems a little overwhelming to me still. <laughs> yeah. What is, I mean, what does the expansion look like? I mean, you, you, do you have a center base of operations? How does, how does it work? I'm, I'm curious about the logistics of that. Yeah. I mean, um, a lot of the times, like we don't, most of the, um, technicians, they come from their houses, so they'll dispatch from right. home. Um, and we try to schedule them with homes that are close to their home just so that mm-hmm. they're not flying all over the place. Um, but then there's those, you know, clients that, really, really appreciate and enjoy a technician that lives in Bethlehem, but their house is down in McCungy or right. um, there's Easton. And then there's, you know, we have a few technicians that commute down from like Lehigh and Palmerton. Hmm. Um, and that's a hike too, you know? Yeah. So um, trying to accommodate the clients that prefer certain technicians, but then also trying to, you know, keep in the loop, you know, drive time so that people aren't in their cars all day. And um, so, I mean, hypothetically it would make sense um just because everyone dispatches from home every like anyway right um it's just more like training and like gaining traction somewhere else i mean like you said like we do have really great branding and i'm so thankful for that um but does that come from you are you the branding creative or do you have help with that no it wasn't me um (laughs) uh my ex-husband actually came up with hocus pocus as the name um okay (laughs) Um, I had a friend who designed the graphics for the logo. Um, it was a, a "Hey, you're pregnant" present for my youngest. Um, <laughs> so there's that, and um, I think that you know the way that she kind of looked at it was the logo itself looks like um, Bewitched, like from like the sixties. Yeah, yeah um, but then you know our generation we appreciate like Hocus Pocus witches from like you know mm-hmm. Salem or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So it speaks to two like generations of people, which I can also super appreciate because it just kind of extends the reach that we have. Um, but yeah, like the witching hour thing, um, I think I yeah talk about that because you you touched on it briefly, and then I was like, wait, that sounds really cool. Yeah. So I mean, if we're in someone's house, I'm like, you know, one of the things we do ask like of our clients is like, if you could straighten up just a tiny bit before like we come in, like we don't want to have to like you know vacuum up Legos or, you know, like we, right. like, um, the girls have a set amount of time in each house, like, and it varies based on the size and all that other stuff. But, mm-hmm. um, if we go in there and like, it's like super cluttered, um, you know, we could say, Hey, you know, you guys could maybe benefit from two hours of our witching hour package where, you know, we come in and we can, you know, perch the playroom or pool, you know, the you're, size you're talking to a dad of three. That sounds amazing. <laughs> We just want to give people their time back, essentially. And I think one thing that COVID taught us was that, you know, people really started considering what their time is spent doing. Right. Um, We were all stuck at home with our families. Well, and now we we aren't for the most part. Mm -hmm. We're all back to real life at this point. Um, But we don't have time to do anything um, outside of work. Well, you talked about delegating professionally, but I think there's something to be said for delegating your personal life, too, like the cleaning that's time I could be spending with my kids, but instead, you know, I'm scrubbing a toilet for the Mm -hmm. 20th time because my boys don't know how to pee in it. There's Um, that. (laughs) But that's delegation that allows you to spend more time with your family, right? I I think it's a form of self-care for sure. Like, Mm -hmm. um, it's one thing that, you know, it relieves your anxiety. Um, I've been doing a lot of research. I've done a few presentations for the forum about, you know, well, just one for the forum, but, 
Um, there's been a few um, where it's just like, it actually shows that it increases like your mental health overall. Like if your house is like tidy and put together and organized and you know where everything is and um, it also decreases depression levels. We started mm. looking into like the benefits of changing your sheets regularly and um, that's, that's really interesting. Better. My next question to you was going to be, do you find any sort of, you know, um, coming together of your two disciplines, right? Like of, of the cleaning business and of the, the therapy, but it sounds like you, you have found it. Like there is this, this, uh, connection between the two. Yeah. So like, I, I love, I'm obsessed with psychology, so I have not let that go. Um, and I think that managing the team and like focusing on that, like employee retention, there is like a huge psychological aspect to that. Yeah. Um, but then on the flip side of that as well, um, I have a coach for, you know, our cleaning, it's like a mastermind group. Um, and I just got certified to coach underneath her. So that kind of blends like the therapy with like cleaning expertise and like running a successful cleaning business. So um, I try to find every opportunity to blend the two um, just because I think that both of them at this point are such a huge part of my life. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's been, it's been fun trying to like kind of pick apart and figure out like, where can I throw psychology into cleaning? Cause you yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. That, that's really cool. Do you feel successful? Do you feel like you've had success with the business? Are you comfortable where you are? I am. Yeah. I'm very comfortable. Yeah. It's been fun. Um, I mean, I think that we're kind of in a place now where, you know, delegating has played such a huge part in my life that I don't feel like it's work. And I think that that's one thing that you can kind of say you consider success is the fact that like, you don't want to like gouge your eyes out every time you open your computer, yeah. you know? Um, but then I also think that like people, everyone's definition of a success is different. Right. Um, but for me, it's like having that time, um, to be able to spend with my kids or, you know, go to mm-hmm. baseball practice or, um, even picking them up from the bus stop. Like I just, I would hate to spend the majority of my life just like working all the right. time. Right. And, um, and that's, that's a great accomplishment. And I remember you telling me that you had your greatest accomplishment, um, and I thought this would be a good chance for you to tell people what it was because I loved uh, the way you frame it. Like it, it it's kind of silly, but the way you frame it is really powerful. I think it's actually funny. Cause yeah, at our company party last night, I like had told my operations manager, I'm like, yes, yeah, so I'm on this podcast tomorrow. And he asked me to tell him my fa- like five favorite stories. And I brought this up to her and she was like, you literally talk about that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, my biggest accomplishment to date that I tell my team is that I won the spelling bee second place in second grade. Um, <laughs> and they always look at me like I'm crazy when I say that they're like, Oh my God, you've accomplished so much. Like you, you know, you have yeah. a math degree and you have this and this. And I'm like, no, because that I didn't get first place. Um, and I really, really, really prepared for this spelling bee. My grandmother that came from Scotland, she was very much, um, the type that I'd come home from school and she'd have like those like phonics books and like those math books, like yeah. that you used to buy at like Kmart. Um, so school never ended for me. I was always preparing <laughs> for school. Um, so yeah, when I only got second place in the spelling bee, I was like, um, but it always causes me now to just keep pushing, like, I feel like it's almost like an overachieving. Yeah. It could almost be to a fault depending on how you look at it. Um, You're never going to get second place again, basically. I try not to. Yeah. <laughs> it, it happens <laughs> though, but that just makes me keep pushing. So yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I love that story. I, I think it, there's something powerful to when you are that young and impressionable, those moments that you have can really kind of shape who you are and everything I've heard talks to the person who got second place and now is pushing themselves to get that first place every time. It's, it's really cool to see that manifest. I love that. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, this sucks because we're like basically out of time and I've really enjoyed this conversation. Um, but what we do do is we give a shout out to, um, our sponsor, Notch Modern Kitchen and Bar. I don't know if you've been there, but yeah, they put together fantastic custom cocktails where you kind of tell them the mood you're in, what kind of drink you want, and they put it all together and it's awesome. Um, okay. So what we like to do is kick it up a notch here. Um, okay. and you know, it's, it's been a long week where you, you've done, I guess you, do you go out to homes anymore or do you kind of stay behind the scenes at this point? Um, yeah, I basically manage the managers. Uh, my yeah. like technical, um, position title, it would be managing director. So, um, okay. 
I so, hum, I hop in when I like uh, if the office is kind of backed up or if she's out on an appointment or something, mm -hmm. um, or I'll drop off st supplies if like ops is kind of hung up somewhere. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty much just behind the scenes now, and yeah, I'm trying I mean, to be a hermit. <laughs> you've got 17 people. I mean, that's that's a great team. Like that's a really good sized team. Thank so you. someone's got to run the ship. Yeah. Um, so you've had a long week of directing managers. And you're looking to unwind and get the weekend started. What What is Rose reaching for? What's her drink of choice there? Um, I'm always a fan of bubbles. Prosecco's like <laughs> my husband always makes fun of me for it. He's like, you just love bubbles. You're going to turn into a bubble. So. <laughs> I think that fits your personality. Like I get very bubbly, like you're fun to talk to. So I think bubbles is a perfect answer for you. I love that. That's awesome. Because sometimes I don't feel that way. <laughs> It's, I mean, I won't get into the therapy with you, but I think we all, you know, we all feel that way sometimes. Sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right. So before we leave, any, any last things you want to hit or say about Hocus Pocus or anything in general before we, we sign off here? Uh, well, like you said, I mean, we aim for the, the type of clients that have the dual working households with the kids that don't have enough time on their hands to get the tasks that they need completed. And, you know, we don't just offer the cleaning services. We also have the witching hour stuff so that, you know, if your four year old needs his closet, you know, purged out and he doesn't fit this size anymore, we'll go in there and we'll clean it out. And um, there's just so many different aspects to a home that, you know, we just want to give you your time back. So that's amazing. Yeah, I, I love it. Um, I've got three kids, so I will be hitting you up after this for lots of reasons. Okay. Um, but that, this was awesome. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for talking. I, I really enjoyed this Rose. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. I hope you have a Absolutely. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for listening to another episode of the why am I talking podcast. If you enjoyed this and want to hear more content from amazing personalities in the Valley, please subscribe, leave a rating and drop us a quick review.